Several years back, I had the privilege to teach people how to get some kind of direction and urgency in their lives. And as a life coach, one of the tools that we normally use is the obituary. Steve Covey taught us that you need to begin with the end in mind. I found something very interesting as I was doing this exercise and I was taking people through this. I found that when I started mentioning things to do with death, it was treated like taboo, as in very many people did not want to answer questions related to the end of life. And in fact, very many people were unwilling to do the assignment that needed them to write their obituary. And I understand that there is some ominous feeling about death and so on. And I want to just throw all the caution to the wind and start a new series today to discuss some of the things we can learn from staring at death in the face. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Okay, I don't know about you, but if you ask several people, probably some of them will tell you that they've had a brush with death once or twice or several times in their lives, and probably others will be scared even to tell you a story about it. But let me tell you that in my life, there are some instances where there was a brush of death, and one is actually a story being told by my dad, and there's a day that mom was not in the house and him he was also not in the house and for some reason it's only us the kids who are in the house and in my own remote thinking and imagination and maybe trying to remember i remember that i had this idea when we were kids just that you know let me rally my friends rally my brothers there were two of us three of us let me rally my elder brothers, I was the youngest, let me rally my elder brothers so that we can, you know, wipe the house and when the parents come back home, they'll find the house clean and so on and they'll buy us shoes. That was what I wanted to do. And uh, the end result was basically to be rewarded by being given shoes. So guess what we did? We poured water on the floor and I mean just all over the place and started the process of pushing the water squeezing the water out and I mean kids not knowing what to do and then along the way we got tired and hungry and someone had a beautiful idea to guess what cook and what we were using to cook was a gas cooker and so what happens is that we try to switch on this gas and, you know, I mean, it's just on and on and it's just oozing and oozing and oozing and we're trying to light it up, but thank God all the matchboxes were wet because we had, I mean, we had made a mess with water and so on and so forth. And my father was coming back and he could smell gas from very far off even as he was walking back home. And he says that he was pitying the family whose maybe gas was leaking. And so he comes home, he finds a fine mess. It was his house that was leaking with gas. He tells that story and he says, you know, God is great. And by that time, by the way, he wasn't even a born again guy and so on. He just said, God is great. We would have been lost in that gas explosion. 
And so that's one brush that I had with death, at least being told by someone else's someone else's story. The second brush I had with death was some years back when I was, I think, I, I can't remember, must have been 12 or uh, not really 12, but before 12, probably between the ages of 7 and 12, right there. There's this cousin of mine called Morris and his father bought him a football, I mean a real football. Before then, we would be playing with pieces of paper that we'd strewn together with strings and we had a blast with those things at those moments. But this guy, his father buys him a football and this football, we were playing you know on and off and uh, you know he will go back with it so there's a time that a cousin of mine another cousin of mine with a huge leg blasted that thing into my stomach and i pretended to be macho you know the ball fell on my feet and i pretended to dribble and so on and long story short i just the only thing i remember was falling down someone else was saying that one is gonna die that one is gonna die and i just fell down flat and everything went blank and black I can't remember breathing I don't remember nothing and then after a few moments I came to I think they they do see whatever they they do those things breathing in your mouth and so on and I got up and everyone was relieved we went back home up to today no one has ever told my parents that incident (laughs) that was my second brush with, with death but on a serious note People normally have what we call the near-death experiences. And every time you come face-to-face with death, it is like when you come face-to-face with a lion or a ferocious animal, you will never be the same again. It's like basically you're walking on the edge of a cliff. You know your life is hanging in the balance. You can never be the same again when you're staring at death. And let, let me tell you, at that moment in time, the most important thing, That's why we normally give people this test of death and obituary. The most important thing at that moment in time when you're dying or when you're facing death, the most important thing is what matters in life. That's where we normally take you there to think about that. And in the next episodes, we're going to be sharing very many things on how we can die well, how we can live well, and how we can die well in the process. But I want to share this, and I want to say that death, of course, is a taboo. If you are to be a person who is facing death at that moment in time, even if you are not a spiritual person, you will notice that on your deathbed, or when you're facing death itself, not necessarily through a deathbed, but sometimes some people normally face death when there is, uh, uh, maybe they are on the aeroplane and the guy just drops height i mean (laughs) oh lord i remember traveling from entebbe to nairobi using kenya airways and at some point in time when this guy was approaching nairobi who just dropped the height all of a sudden and it's like your heart remains in the air and your body goes down you're facing death at that moment in time Let me tell you, even if you're not a spiritual person, you will notice that on your deathbed or on your facing death, there's only two major things in life. Only two major things. Number one is spirituality, especially if you have enough time to think. And number two, people. Those are the only things that are going to be important to you. Spirituality and people. Spirituality has to do with things like your values, your vision, what matters most. And then people, of course, are people. And when you're talking about people, you're talking about things to do with love, things to do with impact, things to do with contribution, helping, and so on and so forth. Those are the most important things in life. And I'm telling you, we're running Elsa Skelta all over the place trying to do this, trying to do that, trying to find out what makes sense in life. And all along, we are missing these two things. We are looking at life to gain much from life having tangible things, having valuables and accumulation of this and accumulation of that. And we're missing these two things. We're missing essence in life. In other words, we're missing purpose in life. And we're also missing people. And those two are connected. There is no way you're going to talk about purpose without talking about people. 
So I'm, I'm teaching us today that if we are going to be people who must live our lives in a productive way, with urgency and with direction, we have to consider what happens at our death. How is it, by the way, that we are so keen to take interest and to notice the last words that people normally speak? Why is it that, you know, someone can be, like I, I normally quote myself over and over again, very many quotes I've curated, very many, more, more than 600 quotes that I normally share with people and on my social media every single waking day. And they just go flat out and nobody takes note and few people take note and some people share it and some like it. Some just go unnoticed. But when someone is dead, we want to find out what they said before they died. Or maybe what they said while they were living. So that's why the quotes of these guys who died, E.E. E. Cummings, you know, Albert Einstein, Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr., John F. Kennedy, Kwame Nkrumah, Kenyatta, all those guys who died, their words become powerful. Their last words become powerful. See, why is it that we are so keen to record what was on their minds at that moment more than any other moment in their lives? The reason is simple. You cannot fake it when you are dying. That's it. You can't. You are suspended between life and death and therefore the only thing that matters, the only important thing that matters are the aspects of life that are important, that are crucial. Those ones are the things that matters to you. In fact, even if you are not a spiritual person, you will think of those things that are spiritual because you are dying. All else fades away like, you know, dust blown away ferociously by the wind. And we all know this. How do we know this? Take a look at the moment in time that you had a brush with death or you were under tremendous pressure. What things were on your heart when your heart was being crushed with hopelessness? What was lingering in your spirit? Is it valuables? Or was it people? Or is it purpose? Or is it meaning in life? It will be the intangible things that mattered plus people. And so in the episodes that are going to follow, we want to discuss death experiences, near-death experiences, and what we can be able to learn from them. But today's lesson is simply this. The two most important things that matter to you, especially when you're facing your death, are matters spiritual things of essence, things of meaning. And the second thing is people. Tomorrow we discuss something else. Until then, think about that and put premium focus on those. Bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.